Hey guys, it's Jillian with Fix Your Digestion. Would you be grossed out to learn that there are four pounds of beneficial bacteria that live in your large intestine? This might sound gross to some, but this beneficial bacteria provides a wide variety of services for us that I would like to talk about today, just real quick. Before we get into that though, let me talk a little bit about this body of bacteria. So there's four pounds worth, Four pounds is about the size of an organ, and actually, the beneficial bacteria that live in our guts are about as active, metabolically active, as the liver, which is our busiest organ on the block, okay? So this four pounds of bacteria represents trillions and trillions of cells. There are thousands of different species of bacteria that live in our gut including some, you know, some bad guys. We have a little bit of E. coli that lives in us naturally and a little bit of candida that lives in us naturally too. It's actually not a bad thing, can actually help us a little bit. Problems can arise when they overtake the good guys. So, as a collective, our beneficial bacteria are called a microbiota, okay? They're called a gut microbiota. Now, the supplemental form of our beneficial bacteria, that's called probiotics, right? You guys know that. Probiotics are encapsulated bacteria that we take or bacteria that's in a powder that we eat and then they help colonize our large intestine. And they provide a wide variety of services for us, as I said earlier. So let's talk a little bit about that. So there's a vast range, dozens and dozens of functions, and I'm not gonna be able to list them all now, but you certainly can look them up and I'll be blogging about this as well. So our beneficial bacteria and probiotics, they provide roles that range from nutrition to metabolism to immune health to, meta to metabolic type functions. So they help us absorb and assimilate nutrients, okay, particularly some B vitamins and vitamin K that actually make some of these, these nutrients and help our body absorb them. They also help our body humanize and absorb phytonutrients that we have consumed from plants. By humanizing, I mean turning this plant compound into something that our human forms can, can take. And speaking of human forms, this enormous volume of bacterial cells is so big that if you took all the cells of our body, including those bacterial cells, only one out of 10 cells would be a human cell. The rest is bacteria. So who's controlling who, right? All right, moving on. So we've got the absorption and assimilation of certain nutrients and minerals. We've got the humanizing of phytochemicals. We also have the recycling of antioxidants and making bioflavonoids more readily available. So lots of things in terms of nutrition, okay? Now, we also are finding out more and more that the bacteria that live in our large intestine play a great role in our body composition. So certain strains of bacteria make us more prone to obesity, make us more prone to being inflamed. There are also studies that suggest that <clears throat> beneficial bacteria play a role in total cholesterol and in triglycerides and also in blood pressure. So we have a huge variety of, of metabolic functions that these guys serve for us. They also greatly interact with our immune cells. So optimal beneficial flora will actually help keep our immune system calm and stable and not overreactive. So it helps protect us from autoimmune conditions. It also can help us be protected against lactose intolerance, which is very interesting. And there's lots of studies to suggest that children that are um, supplemented with probiotics can get over lactose intolerance. Not everybody now, so don't... <laughs> Don't go around saying I said this and this, but, but there are some studies to suggest that probiotics can help with children who are lactose intolerant. The beneficial bacteria also provide a role in terms of taking up space in the large intestine. If we think about the large intestine as a big parking lot, you want all of those spaces filled with good guys, okay, because they're doing all of these great functions for you. So they are taking up space so that those bad guys can't come in. Now, if something happens and you have some of your good guys die off, whether that's from an illness or an injury or chronic stress 
or poor nutrition or taking antibiotics and then you have some of your good guys get wiped out, what can happen? If you're not taking probiotics to supplement that or you're not eating probiotic rich foods, things like kimchi and kombucha and things like that, what can happen is those bad guys, candida, some of the pathogenic bacteria that might be present, they can move right in. They're very opportunistic. They're fast growing. And so now we've get, we're getting a population of harmful bacteria. That's called dysbiosis. Then dysbiosis can create changes in the immune system, making the immune system more reactive and inflammatory, which can then lead to changes downstream, or excuse me, upstream in the small intestine, predisposing one to leaky gut, food allergies, then we're sort of in for a, a world of functional GI um, distress. So our beneficial bacteria are very important for us. Immune function, they help protect against autoimmunity. They can help with lactose intolerance. They, pro they provide space against bad guys, and they actually help actively kill bad guys. They're like little hired hitmen for us. Extremely important with metabolic functions, any, anything and everything from inflammation to obesity to heart health. And then they also provide a great service for us for assimilating and absorbing the nutrition that we consume. So let's give three cheers for our good beneficial bacteria that live in our small intestine, excuse me, our large intestine.